You are listening to WTUZ Radio Podcast. This is Rhonda with WTUZ Radio Podcast, and um, today's show, wow. Okay, um, I stumbled across some information uh, probably about a week ago. I've been working on this on and off, and I stumbled upon this information inadvertently, by mistake, in other words. Uh, I was... uh, Looking at this book, who uh, this author was talking about her heritage of being a steward. And, um, of course, I was interested uh, based on the research that I do. So I pulled the book up, started reading through it. And based on the information she was providing, I knew that it was not accurate. So that required me to start doing some research to validate the associated heritage she had because she was putting the steward name uh, with Caucasians and she was giving the explanation on how um, her particular steward lineage came over to the Americas. And uh, once I checked the records, I definitely found her particular relative, and I'm not going to reveal her particular record, although she made it public. I'm not going to do that out of respect because she did write a book, an entire book around this lineage, and I did not find that to be uh, true, okay? Uh, Her folks did come over, that particular one relative, Uh, but it was in the role of a servant, uh, not in the role that she claimed of the the Stuart dynasty. So as I was searching through the records, trying to verify what she was saying that I knew not to be true regarding the Stuarts, I ran across actual (laughs) Stuarts. lineage. And it took me some time to dig through to determine um, if I had uh, one particular steward that I saw show up on the list. I'm like, okay, that can't be who I think it is. So uh, let me do a little, share a little technology here. And uh, we are going to get to it. Okay. All right. So, um, we're literally looking at the passenger list, uh, coming into the Americas. And as you can see, I searched on the name Stewart and I went back, uh, Well, I forgot how far back I went. Um, I think it was the 1500s. I guess I did, because if you click here, there you go. Okay, so what I saw, first name on that list, James Stewart. Arrival, 1685. Okay. So I'm like, well, there's many stewards, right? Many, 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 many stewards. It could be any one of that bloodline, or it could be someone taking on the name of steward, this, that, and the third. So I hovered over this record, and it says that James Stewart arrived 1685, New Jersey. So he came... uh, to New Jersey, primary immigrant, uh, James Stewart gives the publication search code. Now, I could not find the 1685 ship manifest, and it does not surprise me. I could not find it online. I will probably have to uh, go to the UK, which I want to make a trip back there anyway. 
So that may be one of my uh, voyages. I may have to spend a few more days to see if I could get to some of these ship manifest records. Uh, but nonetheless, it is saying here, uh, you see where it says annotation, names of Scottish prisoners ordered deported to plantations in East New Jersey. And so it gives the list of peers, and that's where I was trying to get that ship manifest out of the Glasgow Blackie uh, 1830 edition. And the only records as far back that you can get online are the 1800s. And uh, so meaning ship manifests. They only go back online to the 1800s, and I need to go back to the 1600s, okay? But nonetheless, it's giving the um, exact place where to find the ship manifest, even down to the name of the ship, okay? So I did the next best thing, <clears throat> and I am so glad I did, chow. Because when I tell you I got that good good, I got the good good. So I dropped down and I looked at where it says uh, source biography. And let me see if I could just click into this so you all can see it a little bit more. Okay. All right. So I couldn't, uh, the actual online record, there isn't any online records going back to 1685. So that, you know, from a, from a ship manifest perspective. So I couldn't get the actual ship list with um, the Boyer, because they even give you the ship passenger list, okay? All right, so anybody that's doing your own genealogy, when you're trying to cross-reference folks that you see show up as your relatives over from Europe, all of that stuff is documented. The only catch would be, like in this case, as far back as you go, some of that information is not online. You have to physically go to the place or uh, request a record search. Um, and I'm assuming this is going to maybe be a difficult passenger list to get. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but just, just to give you a little tip. All right. So that's that. So I'm still like, okay, is this, King James, the King James, the last King James Stuart that sat on the throne. So I drop down to where it says the, the sources. So I said, okay, let me see if I could pull this up. And um, it's the Woodrow, Robert Woodrow list of Scots prisoners deported to New Jersey. Um, the, in, um, the history of the suffering of the church of Scotland. Okay. So that part I could do. All right. So before I, I, I literally pulled this book and started going through it and it dropped some jewels. All right. And just one last thing with this record you see down here when it talks about household members, it just says James Stewart. So it's only listing him as the only household member. All right. So hold on to that thought because I have a whole theory about this when we get to it. Okay. So let me go to just um, to give you a little quick Wikipedia-ish. We can do this for given... Um, who King James is, okay, the last King James, all right? So now we know this is not King James. We already done known that's not him. This is the real King James, okay? We have plenty of pictures now. Um, you know, those that rock with me, those that rock with uh, Kui Mayo, those that rock with Legendary Top Cat, this picture should not be a shock to you all. This is the real King James, okay? All right. And this is just one of them, okay? The one thing about it, they had a lot of picture of the last Jacobite King 
King James Stewart. There's a lot of pictures out there with him. Okay, and then as bonus material, I'm going to once again um, put some more pictures together at the end uh, just to remind you who his parents are, which I think I got them here. Yeah, so those are his parents. Um, put King Williams in and a couple of the, those other queens. Um, so I'm going to put together as bonus material just some more pictures of the folks that they're going to be, we're going to be talking about in this particular subject on how the black stewards became white. All right. So that'll be in the bonus material. And you're going to once again, see all of these melanated people. Okay. So just real quick, um, James, the second and uh, what, five, six, the seventh, was King of England and King of Ireland as James II and King of Scotland as James uh, the Seventh. From the death of his elder brother, Charles II. Charles II, melanated also. I'll include a picture of blood. Let's see if they show one here. Yeah, and, and I guess they were struggling trying to, you, you see where they tried to whiten him up. But I got some ni nice little pictures that showing uh King Charles, all right? So uh, he, uh, from the death of his eldest, his elder brother, Charles II, on um, February 1685. Okay, he was disposed in the glorious revolution of 1688. So meaning he was straight up kicked out. So he was the last reigning steward to sit on the throne. He was the last Catholic monarch of England, Scotland, and Ireland. His reign is now remembered primarily for the struggles over religious tolerance. However, it also involves struggles over the principles of absolutism and divine rights of kings. His disposition ended a century of political and civil strife by confirming the primary uh, the primacy of parliament over the crown. James inherited the thrones of England, Ireland, and Scotland from his brother with widespread support in all three countries, largely because the principles of eligibility based on divine right and birth were widely accepted. Okay, so in other words, you could gain the throne or sit on the throne on the crown because of your bloodline. Tolerance for his personal Catholic Catholicism did not extend to tolerance toward Catholicism in general, and the English and uh, Scottish parliaments refused to pass his measures. When James attempted to impose them by decree, this was met with opposition, thus it was a political principle rather than a religious one that ultimately led to his removal. Okay. In June 6, 1688, two events turned dissent into a crisis. The first on the, the 10th of June was the birth of James' son, James Francis Edward, which raised the prospect of initiating a Roman Catholic dynasty and excluding his Anglican daughter Mary and her Protestant husband, William III of Orange. I got a picture of blood too. And he don't look like that. <laughs> so I'd include that in the material as well. The second was the prosecution of the seven bishops for seditious libel. This was viewed as an assault on the Church of England and their acquittal on June 30th destroyed the political authority in England. The uh, anti-Catholic riots in England and Scotland that ensure, ensued led to a general feeling that only his removal from the throne could prevent a civil war, okay? So I'm not going to go into the rest of this. I just want to give you all a quick high level 
Okay, so notice they were saying he reigned from 1685 to 1688. And um, go back to this record. And it's saying this James Stewart came over on six, in 1685. So I was still trying to get the connection. I'm like, is that the same James Stewart? Or is that one of the relatives? Who is this James Stewart? What's going on? Okay, and they talk about it in this um, list of Scottish prisoners deported to New Jersey, 1685, uh, in the history of the suffering of the Church of Scotland. Okay, so I pulled the book. All right. Okay, so um, just to show you what the book is. All right. Hopefully, I'm not going to make y'all too dizzy, rather. Okay. So you could pull this yourself. That's the great thing when folks uh, take the time to scan this stuff. It is much respected and appreciated. Uh, so you can see, um, you know, where it came from and all that jazz. Okay. Okay, so let me go down a little bit more. Do, 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 do. And it looks like 18, I don't know if that's 1884 or 1854. Though I'm calling it Woodrow Correspondence, although it's not spelled Wood. It's It may be Wadrow Correspondence. It could be Wadrow Correspondence. Okay, the first volume. Okay, so that's the name of it. Okay, this was uh, May 1841 for the publication of the works of the fathers and early writers of the Reformed Church of Scotland. Okay, now remember, I got this off of Ancestry.com with them saying that a James Stewart came over to New Jersey in 1685. Okay. All right. So um, I'm just going to jump because I had to jump around because this is, this is a pretty uh, large book. Now watch, it's not going to do it. <laughs> Go to the thingy thing. Um, let me see. Page 50. There we go. All right, so I'm just jumping around in the book. James, sir, sir, that says sir, Sir James Stewart, the son of Sir James Stewart, provost of Edinburgh. His extraordinary abilities in law had attracted notice during the period of persecution under the reign of Charles II but his attachment to the Presbyterian interest and the cause of liberty exposed him to the je jealousy and opposition of the government. He took an active part in the defense of the Earl of Argyle, who in 1681 was tried for his explication of the test on account of which he was diligently searched for and obliged to seek refuge in Holland. After the revolution, he was promoted to the Lord Advocate of Scotland, an office which he had now filled for about 20 years during a critical period of our country's history. Okay, so I'm still like, okay, but is this still the King James that I'm looking for, the King James Stewart that I'm looking for? So what time was that? I'm trying to go back. Why didn't this put it in the order that I did? And I don't appreciate this. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> As y'all can see, I've been up burning up the midnight oil per, per se. Okay, so this is the next one. No, this is the next one. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to go to... um. Just, just a little bit more history on uh, what was going on over there with all of the dramatization. 
me just make sure. I'm sorry, family, bear with me. Uh, I may have to cut this off. I'm I'm sorry. Um do do a little bit of editing. Okay. All right, so this one is uh, going into talking about the marriages between uh, Protestant families and Catholics. Okay, stewards at an end, I notice we are now very much obliged to their marriages with Protestant families as we have been and perhaps yet may more may be plagued for their and their daughters marrying with Papists. I observe it was from this we have had the revolution and this second revolution by marriages with Protestants abroad. Soar against our king's will. Okay, so they're basically talking about this mixing of um, the Protestant church and the Catholic church. Okay, because we have to remember... Um, back during those times that the churches really ran everything. There was no such thing as the separation of church and state. Although to be honest, there really still isn't, but you know, they're going to tell you that it is because of all these revolutions that had jumped off back up in the day. And so the church is just hidden more behind the scenes specifically the Catholic Church that really runs everything. And shout out to our brother from the UK, um, Brother Odell, dropped some powerful, powerful knowledge on our Thursday Live, breaking down the Catholic Church uh, involvement with everything. He even took it all the way back to the initiation in the Roman times and brought it you know, pretty much all the way up to today. So I will uh, definitely tag that particular live in this um, podcast so you can check it out. He did a, a very, very thorough job. So shout out to Brother Odell uh, from the from the UK. Okay, uh, I, that's just really, really a privilege to have someone from the UK uh, able to tell us Americans put together the pieces on uh, what was going, what, what went on and what is going on. All righty. Okay. So that's what they're talking about right here. Okay. So let me back up just real quick here because I didn't forget. Oh, so this is really what I wanted to back up to. So, um, child, I didn't forget who was writing this doggone letter. Um, all right, so this is, uh, to Colonel Erskine. Okay, and so, you can see, I'll start here. I desire humbly to observe and remark this wonderful revolution of affairs in the timing of the Queen's demise and the peaceful accession of King George to the throne, which we have some prospect of, okay? And I'm going to put a, a picture of King George too. And um, Charlotte, I'll put that in there too, in the bonus material. I own, I am like one that is yet dreaming. And I think the surprising removal of the late queen has disconcerted very much the measure of France abroad and our Jacobites at home. And I do think it may be harder for them than before to lay down a new scheme. Because um, when all this dramatization was going on with the Jacobites finally being, or that, that Stuart lineage finally being um, taking off of the throne, well, you had groups forming um, and they were calling themselves Jacobites. So they were uh, basically revolutionaries or rebels that were dedicated to try to get the stewards back on the throne. 
okay? So that's pretty much what that Jacobite means. And it's a derivative of the word Jacob from that Hebrew line because King James said that, uh, you know, the, the, the first King James said that he uh, is from the line of Jacob, okay? And I'm even going to include a, a, a portrait that shows him, and it has um, on the inscription of the port portrait, um, I think it's like King Stuart, no, I think it's like King Jacobus, something like that. I can't remember if it's King Stuart Jacobus or just um, uh, King Jacobus. But either way, uh, that is proof once again, that he claimed Hebrew heritage and used the name of Jacob, all right? Okay, because as a matter of fact, James really is Jacob, all right? That's really what that, you can swap that out. You can swap out James and Jacob from a naming perspective. I think in Dutch, you can do it. I'm not so sure about French. All right, so, um, yeah, so the queen has disconcerted very much the measures of France, of France abroad and our Jacobites at home, and I do think it may be harder for them that before to lay down a new scheme, and I take this, if improving, to be the turn of affairs exceedingly to the advantage of the Protestants abroad, and sometimes I am ready to fear it may be sent as much for their relief as it may be for ours in Scotland. Okay, so he's talking about, because remember, this is based on uh this is based on oh shoot, I know I went to one of these. Is it this one? Yeah, sorry. This is based on the stewards being kicked out of England. Okay? So when he talks about in these particular memoirs, them being abroad, he's talking about not just the U.S. They went other places as well. Okay? But I'm just giving you the U.S., because that's what I'm focusing on, all right? So if you look at this list, you see nothing but stewards. James Stewart, Prudence Stewart, um, John Stewart, Margaret Stewart, Henry Stewart, J. New Stewart, and then that's the same James Stewart uh, record again, Walter Stewart, and Walter came over earlier, 1653. Um, and then Patrick Stewart, Ann Stewart. I was child, I didn't, you know, I never went to the next page. Okay, I thought they was giving me more. Okay, um, I guess I could. Yeah. So as you can see, child, I could go on and on. Here go Elizabeth Stewart. It's all here. Elizabeth Stewart, Neil Stewart, O'Neill Stewart. That's probably the same person. Andrew Stewart. Robert Stewart. I'm assuming that's no, no, because it's different years. Robert Stewart. Okay, and you see them going to different places. These folks are Virginia. How they just going to say America 1699? They don't cut it. Where it's, I don't know how they got away with that raggediness. <laughs> so you can see Rod Stewart is, uh, came in on Virginia. Uh, Robert in 1694 came in on Boston. Here go these South Khaki Lackey. Okay, this particular steward, actually they have twice. So maybe uh, it had to be a different bloodline 
Yeah, because I'm not bloodline um, different folks because one was 1680 and then another one was 1830. Okay, but you see they came in to South Carolina. Um, there goes somebody else from New York. Now, Prudence came the same time. They say that James Stewart came, which was 1685, except James Stewart, they claim, was New Jersey. Um, Prudence wind up in Philly. Uh, Margaret on this one... They say it came in, um, and this makes sense, 1684 in New Jersey. Okay, if James came in 1685, Jersey. Okay, so you see another Henry Stewart came over earlier in Virginia, which that makes sense. Because remember the 13 black colonies set up by the other James Stewart. Okay, so just giving you all... You all see the list of the stewards coming over. It's all here. It is here. Okay? It's here, family. All of it. There go a Jacobus steward. Okay, we went over this when we went over the um, Dutch East Indian Company. Okay, we went over this particular list, okay? Because it um, just shows you how far back uh, the stewards go. But again, it blew my wig back to have uh, see James Stewart on that list of passenger list in 1685 around the time that all of that revolutionary drama was jumping off and he was dethroned. Okay, so let's go back to the memoir, okay? All right, so they're talking about the Jacobite steel, trying to get them back on the throne. It's going to be harder um, because uh, they're scattered, so meaning they got kicked out. They're in different places, okay? So they didn't just not come to the America's mainlands. Uh, they also went to the Caribbeans in the Americas, um, pretty much you could say all over the world, to be honest. Okay. But I'm just focusing on America. All right. And sometimes I am ready to fear it may be sent as much for the relief as it may be for ours in Scotland till we better prepare for the mercy. I observe the name. I shall not say in brackets the race of the and he blotted out the name stewards but he left the s he blotted out the rest and he put the t s boom this right here this right here people Let's see if I can highlight this. I showed in the heck dog on can. He's telling you how the steward name was whitewashed. So he is telling you in this memoir. He know they black. He know what they race is. So right here, we could see for whatever reason, I don't know if that was a part of the exile agreement. That I don't know. Maybe that was a part of the exile agreement with the uh, King James, the last steward sitting on that throne. That it would be stricken out the records of what their race is. Or it was stricken out the records to hide identity. I don't know. But like we've been, been done telling y'all how stuff was whitewashed. Well, blood just said it. So let's continue to the next page. Stewards 
yes, two words, pl plural, at and in, I notice we are now very much obliged to their marriages with Protestant families, as we have been, and perhaps yet more may be, plagued for their and their daughters marrying, marrying with Papists. I observed it from this. We have had the revolution and this second revolution by marriage with Protestants abroad soar against our king's will. Okay. I cannot but notice the father's apostatation or whatever that is, apostatizing from if he was not bred a papist our holy reformation and justly turn out of our throne and his two daughters standing firm to our religion and both of them enjoying the throne he was justly deprived of. So still talking about um, getting kicked out and yet both childless and the line ending in the seed of only the papists we have been plagued with since the Reformation. Okay, so whoever his uh, two daughters were, I guess they didn't have any children. They was probably scared to have children that they was going to be taken out. I know I would have been if I was them. Okay, but nonetheless, there he's, he's pretty much saying that they were forced to, into marriage to Protestants abroad. So I don't know if it was forced or if it's so much of uh, they started marrying into the Protestants for protection. Okay. Because this particular uh, last of the steward um, was all, he was a uh, Catholic religion. Okay. And you got to remember this isn't so much about he want to practice Catholicism over Protestant or the protesters, because that's really what Protestant is. It's not about religious worship, okay? I know that's what the records tell you, but it's really about which kingdom you are aligning yourself with. Because the church held much political power. They were the political power, to be honest. Okay? So that's what that was really about. Okay? All right. Um, how far the children's teeth were set on edge by the sour grapes the father ate. I am not to determine. I cannot but mind the old and odd tale of our James V. So, child, I had read all past that. So this is this is confirming that he's talking, no doubt about it, talking about um, King James. From what spirit... It came in plain enough at the birth of Queen Mary. It came by a lass, and it will go by a lass. I reckon we lost our religion in some measure by the union of the crowns. And the Scots kingdom went off in her son when he went to England. And in the last of that race, Excuse me, y'all. So let me just read that again. Let me just reread re it did that again. I reckon we lost our religion in some measure by the union of the crowns and the Scotland, the Scots kingdom went off in her son when he went to England. Because remember, King James Stuart, the last one sitting in that seat, was the king of uh, what, Scotland, Ireland, and England. When he went to England and in the last of that race, so 
So I'll pause right there. Because remember, back uh, just a few little sentences up. I'll just go back up so I should remember. He said, I observe the name. I shall not say the race of the S. And then he said T.S. So once again, oh boy, you're saying in this, uh, what's the face? In this little letter. That and in the last of that race. A woman to go no further lost our sovereignty in the union of the nations. What the Lord has to do with this new line. Now I'm going to read that again. What the Lord has to do with this new line, I do not know. So now... I ain't trying to start nothing, but a rah. It's clearly saying that the race changed and it was a total new line. Now, I ain't trying to start nothing. I'm just saying what this man is saying up in this letter. And I just have the pictures to back up what he's saying. I have the pictures to back up. That the stewards were melanated slash black. Charles Nim Black. George Nim Black. William the Orange Nim Black. I just so happen to have the pictures to back that up. And history admits that King James Stewart of Scotland... England, and I know I'm missing something. What is it? Something. Scotland, England, I know I'm missing something. Because <laughs> it was three. That he was the last steward to sit on that throne. So this is clearly saying that the stewards were black. And he's clearly telling you that King James the fifth and the seventh was the last black king of England. And they put a new line. So meaning a new bloodline. When the Lord has to do with this new line, I do not know. They need many prayers that they may be kept from the sad ways of their relationship and predecessors. This old saying of King James put me in the mind of what we had, and they said from Ireland, current among us last winter, which I reflect, blah, 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 yeah, 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 okay. Okay? So now that was just that, uh, talking about the race, uh, about the race. Um, let me see if I didn't went over that. Think I did I go over this? All right, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. So this is saying Sir James Stewart, the son of Sir James Stewart. Now see how the name and the little notes changed to Stewart, because before it was S T U A R T. That's the official records that we see with the throne of the name Stewart, right? Now you see how the name has changed to S-T-E-W-A-R-T. And that's why I tell people, if you're carrying that surname Stewart, whether it's S-T-A-U-A-R-T or S-T-E-W-A-R-T or S-T-E-W-E-R-T, more than likely that is tied to King James now. And that is especially if you are melanated. Let me just say that again. If you are melanated, a.k.a. black, 
and you carry the surname of Stewart in any of the derivatives, more than likely your bloodline ties to King James Stewart now. You can go on Ancestry if you are doing your genealogy. If not, this is a good time to start doing it and search for your people. I'm talking about people in the Americas. I guess this can apply to all the people around uh, the world in general. Okay? But in the for the people in the Americas, you can go on Ancestry.com and see and link your, your bloodline to those stewards and see exactly when they came over. And now you know those stewards were melanated. Now, white people carrying that steward, surname, last name, only thing I could tell you is one or two things. One of the things is <clears throat> your people took on that surname when they came over via immigration or they came over as servants. And took on that steward name. Hence, I as I saw a Caucasian lady who's claiming her people are or of are the steward royal bloodline when her people just had came over as a servant. And it literally said white on the record. It says servant. And at that time, her people that her, yeah, her people, that relative wasn't even had a steward, didn't even have a steward uh, last surname. So I was just so turned off. I, did, I wasn't even interested on how she was going to tie her bloodline to the stewards. Because, because I knew what I knew what I knew, I already knew what the story was. Okay. So Caucasian people, if you're carrying that steward name, your folks either just took on the name when they came over to the Americas. I can't speak of anywhere else, but it's more than likely still the same case. Uh, they came over as servants or they were uh, your people tied to the new set of folks. Okay. All right. So, Sir James Stewart, the son of Sir James Stewart, provost of Edinburgh. His extraordinary abilities in law had attracted attracted notice during the period of persecution under the reign of Charles II. Yep, we're going to end the bonus material be showing a picture of Charles II, melanated man. But his attachment to the Presbyterian interest and the cause of the uh, liberty exposed him to the jealousy and opposition of the government. All right, so um, I'm not going to go. Well, I guess I could. I guess I better go through it. He took an active part in the defense of the Earl of Argyle who in 1681 was tried for his explication of the test on account of which he was diligently searched for and obliged to seek refuge in Holland. Okay. After the revolution, he was promoted to the Lord Advocate of Scotland, an office which he, which he had now uh, filled for about 20 years during a critical period of our country's history. So I tag this because it talks about Sir James Stewart and pretty much saying that he went into exile or he went into hiding and then he was able to come back, but he was given a position. So... That's why I think now this is this is just my personal humbly lowly opinion. I think 
this particular record is of King James Stewart, but I don't necessarily think, not necessarily think, once I finish going through this memoir, he did not live over here in the States. I think this was just a ruse. So saying, yeah, we kicked his, his behind out of here. We kicked him out. So in order for him not to be um, found and taken out, I think they created this record, plus a lot of stewards came over as well. So they just created this record, but he was still hiding out somewhere in Europe. Okay? But it, in my opinion, this record was definitely created saying that he came over to the United States, to Jersey, specifically New Jersey, as a prisoner of war. He was deported. But you get to Blood's memoirs, and they put in uh, King James that he had went to Holland. Okay. All right. So let's see. I had something else I want to go over. Talked about that. Um. Okay. So I think. I think I'm about uh, we're about to wrap up. So I want to talk about next. Um, his deathbed. Okay, so before I do that, let's just flip back to the record. Sorry, y'all, it's a lot of screens tonight. Um, they said he was taken out about uh, 1701. 1701, he transitioned. All right. So, Sir James Stewart, or Stewart, see how the name changed. Okay. So, I want y'all to pay attention because it started out as Stewart. Early up in these memoir publications, and shout out to the man in the little letter that talked in code. I appreciate you, sir. You talked in code. We know exactly what you mean. He pretty much said, I can't even mention it. I can't even mention the man's race. I can't even mention the race of the stewards. The original Spelling of the Stuart name, S-T-U-A-R-T. But they were the last of their race. I mean, to me, it can't get no more clear than that. So very clever on your part, sir. It is appreciated because you validate what we have already said, what other folks have already said, and these pictures are proven how the Stuart name was whitewashed, okay? And to protect their identity because they were technically, meaning the Stuarts were technically in exile, all right? So you hit the original, you saw the passenger, uh, not the passenger list, but the immigration list, and I'll just flip back there once again. Uh... Of all these stewards coming over, you can see it, and we're going to go back to one, page one, because you see it's like six pages. <laughs> it's like six pages. So you see in 1685, um, you had James Stewart, which is clearly, that is King James Stewart, the last uh, King of uh, Scotland and England and Ireland. That's the that's the one. Uh, Scotland, England, and Ireland. Those are the three kingdoms that he, the last steward ruled over. Last um, King James Stewart. 
So a record was created for him that he came to New Jersey in 1685. I personally don't think he came to Jersey. I just think he was put on the ship manifest. Because I think he was uh, still over in Holland, chilling, until he was able to secure a position that one little name in that position, uh, I forgot what they said they was giving him, but he had to change his name from Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, to S-T-E-W-A-R-T, and he had to keep his mouth shut on who he really was, although everybody already knew who he really was. Okay? Because they had officially lost power, so that was the agreement that was given to him. So I think this particular record was just a placeholder. Okay, because remember, all of the stewards were supposed to be kicked out of Europe. All right? But you can clearly see a lot of other stewards here in the Americas. And they had been coming over here anyway. Because we saw in the earlier uh, records, I think this last one. Oh, I'll go back one. When I was talking about um, the East Indian Company, the Dutch East Indian Company, uh, they were coming over there also, and they, they've been coming over for quite some time, and which would make sense, because if King James set up the 13 colonies, of course the stewards would be coming over. Okay, let's see if I can get the earliest. That still ain't even the earliest. I don't know why it's coming up like that. But nonetheless, you get the picture. Okay. So, Sir uh, James Stewart, now he didn't change to this Stewart because he's incognito, per se, himself, Sir James Stewart himself, when on his deathbed, testified a similar aversion to... The con this kind of constellation. When says Wodro, ministers were paying, praying, I'm sorry, praying beside him and began to speak of his usefulness and to pray for his recovery. He would have drawn up his shoulders and said, Hout, hout. All right, so I don't know all what that hout, hout means, but guess it don't matter. So let's go to this one. Okay, so it's just, again, just giving an account of um, him transitioning. He told he was afraid of a storm on this land, and this is King James' last little words, um, or last conversations, and of a foul mixture, that was his words, by the union, which was then but beginning, his death being August 6, 1706. Okay, so when you look at, is it there? No, it's here. Well, here they're saying 1701, okay? But that was the same King uh, James, okay? He was just in, incognito. Now, I could be wrong. I don't think that I am. But this was the same King James. Okay? So let's go to the other one. So that's, I did that on 1251. Because it says he died in exile. So, um, Saturday last at Haddington, Haddington, was at a, cabal carousing and dancing and dropped down dead in the company in a moment. A stupidious province. But you shall have a fuller account of the circumstances of this when they come to my hand. All right. So uh, what note did I put on here? Because where am I at? Child, I didn't forget. Oh, I was just... um talking about um, where he had died, okay? He died in Haddington, 
All right, so the other one was um, some of these. Uh, is that the one I wanted to read? Sorry about this, family. I had to literally piece all of this together. Uh, that's not the one I wanted. That was just talking about the Protestant religion. Uh, this is the one I wanted. Okay, so this one is um, extraction from letters. Uh, this is still the Woldrow letters. Upon the first day of this month, May 17th, this church sustained a very inexpressible loss by the death of the great of that great man, the extraordinary Christian, Sir James Stewart, the Queen's advocate. It's true, his life in the extraordinary course of things could not have been much longer. He being upward 78 and nearly 80, he died full of days and universally lamented. His burial was the greatest that had been seen in Ed Edinburgh in the memories of the man. Uh, the assembly came all in the body and waited upon his burial. Indeed, it was debt laying upon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get to the part. Um. So basically, now only thing is I needed to reconcile why they have the different dates in here because they have 1706 so i don't know if this death here is the other the son because remember it was two um king james the other one was his son calling himself sir king james so maybe this was the second one dying so i don't know that's the part that's um a little bit shaky for me OK, but I just wanted to show you that if this man was just a regular man, why would they be giving an account to the queen on him passing away? OK, and then uh, it goes on to say to which he had been so fast and useful a friend that I may justly say the Presbyterian interest sustained no such loss by the death of any since King William's death. Okay, so that right there made me think that that was um, King James Stewart. Okay, now the only thing again is I'm struggling with the discrepancy because the official record says that he perished um, 1701, but you can see in here we got two accounts. One was in 1706. And then now here you're saying 1713. Okay. So I don't know which one of which either one of those are true. But the point being is that this was truly talking about the last King James Stuart being in exile. That's what this entire um Woldrow correspondence was about, about the Jacobites. Um, how they were pushed out of power, and how they were handling exile. Okay? So in other words, keeping track of King James Stewart. Okay? And maybe it was the different accounts in this particular letter because they were trying to throw them off, but this one seems a little bit more specific to me saying that he was 78 near 80. Okay. All right, I think I covered everything. Oh, this is the last one I wanted to cover. Okay, so it's saying um, in Lanarkshire, Sir James Stewart had told the king, allows not him nor the advocate to be absent from the kingdom so that he cannot stand for the election to parliament, which he has certainly carried. And it is like now to fall upon the, uh, the Lord of Lee. So I don't know if that's Lord of Lee. I'm assuming it's Lord of Lee. Lord of Lee, 
whom everybody reckons to be the next best choice, I heartily recommend you to the presence and conduct of the only wise God I am most affectionately yours, Robert Wiley. So again, this is just telling you, let me highlight that, that um, King James Stewart, he didn't change the, the name. The Stewart name had been changed from Stewart, S T U A R T S, to Stewart as in exile. It was Stewart, S T E W A R T. And he became Sir James Stewart. And in these particular memoirs, it said that there were two James Stewarts. The other one was supposedly. Uh, the son of King James Stewart. And it also says in here how they couldn't mention their race anymore. Okay. And then the only other piece in here, and I, I can only just reckon it to be because of um, they were in exile and trying to hold the identity. And I'll have to go back over and, and read it. Why they have him dying in here in two different dates. The closest date, the 1706, is closest to what the official record is saying, 1701. And then you have... Um, a record of him coming over to the States in 1605. I'm sorry, 1685. I apologize, 1685. But he was dethroned, supposedly, and allegedly the official records. When did they say they kicked him out? 1688. Okay. But yet a record was created in 1685 of him coming over to the States. And we have a reference to this record being for the prisoners, name of Scottish prisoners ordered deported to the plantation in East New Jersey. Okay, gives ship manifest and all of that. And they uh, listing the source. And as I'm reading through this source, it talks about the stewards being going into exile and how their race could no longer be mentioned and how the stewards, through the last um, stewards that sat on the throne of Scotland, England, and Ireland, he was a Catholic, and how when they were exiled... They started marrying into the Protestants and they were all scattered abroad. Okay. So I'm only to assume that they were going incognito. All right. So they switched from being stewards, S T A U R T, to steward, S T E W A R T. And it appeared that King James Stewart, last king of Scotland, Ireland, and England, that he really stayed in England undercover. That he was in Holland for a little bit. I think, uh, I think it said in here, 1681, he was in Holland. So he was already in exile, according to these papers, in 1681 in Holland. Okay, and he just went incognito. So some sort of deal was struck where he got some type of title in exchange for him not publicly admitting who he really was. You got to participate in a, a few little things, this, that, and the third. Because the official record was that he was exiled out of 
that he was exiled out of that seat. I'll put it that way. Okay. But yet we see a record in the Americas. They're saying up in his letters that he was in Holland. And then I is there are two death dates. So I am assuming they were just still trying to hide him. So I don't know, maybe this later death date is the more accurate one. I don't know. I That I don't know. So I don't know if Blood died in 1706, which that one kind of sounds shaky, to be honest. This last death date sounds a little bit more legitimate to me. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that all to you all's attention on the games that have been played with the official historical narrative. Yep, some of it is definitely true. Some of it we can definitely follow to the letter. And then some of it we have to literally piece it together. That's just the way they did, did it when they decided to rewrite history. But my main point in doing this was to show you how yet again we have proof of them whitewashing history with the black European kings. So at this point, there should really be no argument about who held the seat of power during those time frames. There really should be no argument. Now, this particular book, it's really a good read. Um, I am going to take the time and read the entire thing. Oh, shoot. That's so frustrating that it's doing that. Um... This is a good book to read because even in here, honey, they was throwing Cromwell under the bus. So I got to go back and get the tea, honey, on Cromwell and all of that. So I'm going to be incorporating um, how his dog face was involved in some shenanigans too. Because in this book, it was saying how Cromwell was involved and putting in the pretenders because that's what in these letters they were uh calling uh the people that were taking the seats of thrones that were not theirs they were calling them pretenders and i saw cromwell's name up in there and i'm like yeah that's about right because we know cromwell was involved with um, kicking the stewards off of their seat. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, let me get the name of this book again. Ciao. Wow. Well, I mean, in their defense, they was making a copy of everything. So the um, Wadro or Woodrow correspondence, this is the first volume. Okay, and it's literally, y'all, just different letters, different people are sending back and forth. And uh, this particular society was just getting all of those letters and just putting them in this particular volume. So that discrepancy with the death dates, that's why I say I don't know if they were putting them in there in two different times to try to throw them off to keep him hidden. I don't know. And I can't, to be honest, I shouldn't even, even sit up here and speculate which one was true, whether it was the 1706 one or the 1788 one. I shouldn't even sit up here and speculate. Heck, I don't know. I wasn't there. But either way, um, this particular um, publication of all of those different letters over the years truly show that they were speaking on King James Stewart. 
And it was truly showing how uh, the race was changed. The race and the bloodline. The race and the bloodline were changed. Okay? So at least with that Stewart line... And the England line, it looks like it got whitened up or probably mulattoed up um, after the dethroning of King James Stewart. Okay. So I hope this wasn't too confusing, fam. Child, this stuff was a total mess. And I can truly understand why people are confused. And it, that's why even it's so important for you to do your genealogy. It is extremely important. Because, heck, how could you just tie yourself to some something out of thin air? And once you go through, go through the records, when you start doing your own genealogy and you start going through your own family... You're going to see a couple things. You're going to see stuff right on the money that your elders told you. And then you're going to see something that the elders thought was there, either wasn't there, or your people were there in that particular area for X amount of time, but they originally came from da 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 Now, that's just in your own bloodline. So imagine trying to tie yourself to an entire region without anything to back it up. You're taking the official history narrative on who they said you are or what some other guru or somebody else done said. And I just simply, based on somebody else claiming they were of the steward bloodline. And just because I know what I know and they're Caucasian, I'm like, okay, now, nah. and I was curious. I'm like, okay, now, nah, now, nah. I got to prove, although she should have been proven because she didn't prove it, that you're of that steward bloodline. That's what led me to that. I busted her in her mess because her folks didn't even come over here originally as no stewards. So, of course, I wasn't even interested, no point from that point on, of learning how she was trying to blend in that steward name. I didn't give a so-and-so. But that made me search on the steward name over in the Americas. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. Is that the James I think it is? So that's what led me on this journey. Okay? And because... He had the power that he had. It didn't matter that he was uh, dethroned. He still had money. He still had power to falsify records, which I really think that record in the Americas was just a placeholder to say when he got kicked out, that's where he went. Now, that's just my lowly opinion. And I only say that because in these memoirs, this is clearly talking about the last king of Scotland, Ireland, and England, King James Stuart. These particular memoirs of these different correspondents back and forth with a bunch of people are clearly talking about that King James. And even in those correspondence, they're giving us two different death dates. But even those two different death dates, it was still the same King James Stewart. Okay. So um, I hope this wasn't too confusing for you, family. Whew. Just another example of how the shenanigans and the foolishness have gone on. Regarding who was really whom, when, and what they were doing 
from the slavery narrative to who was really holding the seat of power. Okay, so I'm hoping that this information is making you question everything. I'm hoping that this information is making you look into your own genealogy. Because at the end of the day, to be honest, that's more important than even this stuff that I'm giving you. Although I'm giving it to you to prove that Europeans were also melanated. And a lot of those early Europeans that came over in America were melanated. Did some Caucasians come over? Absolutely, they came over. Absolutely, they did. They came over in the same ways that the melanated people came. Indentured servants, if you didn't have any type of position of power, very few Caucasians came over with positions of power in the 1600s, Caucasians did not start taking the true seat of power until the late 1800s. You still had a lot of upheaval in Europe as the change or the face of power was being changed from melanated to Caucasian. And just here is one example of how this that one particular dude said that he can't even mention the race of the blanks. So when he wrote that letter, it was already said an agreement was already made that you're not even going to say that what the race of the stewards were. Oh, man. Let me get out of this because it, child, it done crashed on me. I was trying to bring it back up. <laughs> oh, and then PDF said they, it's tired of me jumping around. So I was trying to bring that up for you, family. So, I wish everyone well, child. I guess this is Sunday now for me. I'm going to edit and get this uploaded. Um, if you are not subscribed to us, I highly recommend you subscribe to us, like, and share. Uh, I wish everyone well. This is Rhonda with WTUZ Radio Podcast. Peace and love, family. What? <laughs>